This is, I think the first one is like 88 signature. Uh, this is 89. So I mean, they, and I think by the third one, he finished in uh, 1990 or 91. So he, he did like another um, painted book, which made him pretty popular in comics, which was the Judge Dredd Batman crossover with another uh, British writer. Beautiful stuff here. You know, very realistic. So you can tell he's like posing himself or something. And I love the contrast of like, kind of like a loose, you know, not so defined arm muscles. And then the other arm, super like bulky and, and like veiny and like defined. You know, like it's like two different references. And I think he's just like experimenting and have, having fun. He doesn't really care. Um, like what it might look like. He's just like going to town on it, you know? Yeah, this, I always loved this. This is one of my favorites. There was something magical about like this painting here. Oh, see now I'm even, not like this I missed for many years. It seems like I never really focused on this face here, but now I'm really, really noticing it. It's like so wonderful. good hand gestures so you see th there's a different style to this one altogether it feels like there's like more black spray paint kind of like it's like a little dirty nice little just drawings in there um, again like beautiful realistic texture and everything good gestures hands you know he he knows his anatomy really well HR Geiger right here, like very, very evidently uh, sampled from, from H.R. Geiger. Great colors in this, I, a lot of red in this issue, I feel. Well, especially on this page, but it, it's really nice. This second issue is like kind of like my least favorite because of like scenes like this where I feel like like it doesn't have like um, big splash pages as much. He's just getting this stuff done, you know, like there's nothing really like like it, you see even here it looks kind of rushed. You know, he's just kind of like, boop, 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 you know, he's not doing too much to it. But then, you know, then he goes to town on some things, you know, like this. So, I don't know. I mean, still, it's a huge accomplishment. And, I'm, you know, different style here. So much to admire. Yeah, this is a great spread. I used to draw this. I love this, you know the tightness of the muscles in this, you know, the shortened arm. Like, I think it's supposed to be like bent, but uh, it's like jammed in there and looks awkward and unrealistic. And then the tight muscles across the chest and tight base muscles, you know, like it's just like skin is stretched to, to uh, its utmost. A lot of violence too. This is nice. Beautiful, beautiful colors. This spread is like gorgeous in terms of colors. You know, they say never paint the sky blue, but it really works here. And this abstract texture here. It's amazing. A lot of experimenting in every page and every panel of this. Here you can really tell the texture. He did a lot of covers for like Doom Patrol and uh, what else like, I mean lots of other books over the years and he got to be known for, for texture. 
sometimes you can see it on the other covers and mixed media. This dragon's really neat, very uh, neat design. Hmm, I wonder if he like sketched it out, you know, to figure that out first, or he maybe he just figured it out as he was drawing. I mean, he's got a lot of imagination. This is kind of neat too. It's interesting. It's hard to tell the medium. It's like very watered down. And these poses I loved a lot. And you know, in the coming years, he uses a lot of greens and stuff for his um, poster paintings. And this is kind of the beginning of that, you know, where like skin tone with greens and kind of like sickly looking zombie mus muscle men, you know. This is great. I still love these. The sequence of the monster never really like sold me too much. This this is the narrator. This guy, he's been narrating from the beginning. He's like slain sidekick and he eats his own boogers. But anyway, this, this monster, I mean, they're nice drawings, but I don't know, it's just such a weird sequence I always found. Interesting, like photocopy. There's a lot to be admired once you look in close, like the the silhouettes in the back. I mean, beautifully done, very thoughtful. The script must have been pretty tight, you know, to give him like, you know, uh, the the imagination to do that. It's an interesting s s splash page. I feel like it could have, I don't know. Like I feel like a lot is wasted here, you know, in this splash page. But he's very young. So it's, it's incredible like that in his maybe mid twenties, he's doing such detailed work. Oh. He's, he's still learning, that's the thing, you know, so he, I don't think he, like he knows composition well enough and look at this. I mean, he's really, this tech, the texturing is his strongest point, like, and this, this face here is like, I feel like the most realistic painting he did in this whole series and very modeled after him. If you look at the back, see he's got that pointy, shiny nose. This I love too, you know, like just um, good anatomy knowledge. Even the shoulder, the collarbone, good knowledge of everything. This is like a uh, Turner painting. As a Brit, he would be very familiar with Turner, I'm sure. Yeah, so it's like, you see, this is, this is why it's like my least favorite, this kind of silly character. There's too many panels devoted to this sequence, I feel. And it's kind of slower too, like there's all this kind of domestic, these domestic scenes. But really, I mean, still very beautiful paintings. In interesting choices of like profiles and stuff. Like I, he's just trying things. This looks very real right here. The lighting and the texturing. This is kind of a cool splash page, but again, like kind of wasteful around here. 
like you, you know you could certainly put a long panel here or do something you know but it, he's that one of the things that I really enjoyed with his work was uh, also the these abstract builds of like the physicality like like the muscles like that bicep there it's like only this short so it's like shoulder this short then a big forearm you know so he would play around with that and then even the shape of the bodies and the distortion of the body and the muscles he he could really sell you on that on any distortion by lighting it really interestingly and uh, even like the muscles uh, just you know I don't know just like lighting it interesting and then like shading it and adding lots of cool shadows he could really sell you on anything these are kind of fun like I like this you know I mean really realistic shading on the teeth you can really feel those oh yeah this this I mean this is phenomenal maybe the arm here is like just perfect you know the the lighting and the shading on that it looks real like he's an absolute master it's strange that he never like got into fine art you know like I guess he made such a good business from drawing comics and I guess he got into game design later in his career beautiful you know but it's it's strange because he you know he could really go into fine art and probably make a pretty good career Conan little Conan appearance they don't say it's Conan but you know the king of kings so and then they got Conan and Den this is Den from Heavy Metal by Richard Corbin and this is very Klimt right here you can you can tell the influences the Klimt again you know very Klimt ish yeah this whole sequence actually this sequence gets kind of nice I like this sequence where he gets a word of the helmet yeah this is a great painting It's an odd story because it's like this guy's got a laser eye, you know, but it's like it's Celtic times. And I feel like this issue also ends kind of like less dramatic, you know, with these pages. Like you'd think like it would end with maybe some big cliffhanger splash page, you know.